Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Running over, running over, my cup is full and running over. Since the Lord saved me, I'm as happy as can be. My cup is full and running over. <coughs> deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide, deep and wide. Deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and Number six.
offer songs of loud springs. Teach me some now of your sonnets, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, here by thy great help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus saw me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood oh that day when free from sinning i shall see thy lovely face clothed in the blood washed linen how i'll sing thy sovereign grace come my lord no Terry, take my ransom soul away. Send thine angels now to carry me to realms of endless days. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness. Like a fetter, by my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for the courts above. Okay, let's turn our Bibles this morning to Matthew chapter 14. Beginning in verse 22, Matthew chapter 14 and 22, we're going to look this morning at Jesus walking on the water. Matthew 14, 22. This is after the feeding of the 5,000, which was just counting the men. That wasn't including the women and the children. From that one little basket of food. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain on part to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Everybody. God's son. <coughs> God himself took time out pray to spend time with his heavenly father very important can't overemphasize how important that is I know sometimes with our lifestyles and things that are going on in our life we find it difficult sometimes to get that time alone with our heavenly father which we all need we all need that every single if Jesus needed it you certainly need it. I certainly need it. But there's times we need to just recharge. We need to get along with God and pour our hearts out to God. To cry unto God. Whatever. It's important. Very important. Take time. Make time in your life for that. I don't care how busy you are. Take time to get along with the Lord and to pray and to meditate upon his word and to spend time with him. It is that important. And in the, and the But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. 
And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Imagine this, to look out and see someone walking on this stormy sea coming toward them. And they recognized Jesus' voice. They realized it was him. It wasn't the spirit. They weren't seeing things. They weren't hallucinating. This was the Lord Jesus Christ walking them to them on that boat. Now remember, there's 12 of them there. And I'm going to talk about them. The, I'm going to talk about the 11. We're going to talk a little bit about Peter because mainly when people see this passage of scripture, that's what they focus on is what Peter did and what happened to him. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But I want to mainly focus this morning on the 11 that didn't get out of the boat. You know, it's easy sometimes to be critical of someone who does something and they fail. It is. I mean, it is. But don't criticize somebody for doing something that you wouldn't do. We're bad to do that, aren't we? If you won't do it, well, don't criticize somebody else if they fail when they do it. But people are like that, though, aren't they? And we're going to see, of course, these 11, they didn't do anything. It doesn't say they criticized Peter in it for doing what he did. But, you know, I'm just saying that oftentimes <coughs> people, they can tell you how to do something, but they won't actually do it themselves. But they can tell you how to do it. <coughs> Don't be critical of someone when they fail if they're trying to do something for the Lord. All right, let's look here. It says in verse 28, And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now that took faith, didn't it? I mean, it did. To step out on that water believing that you could walk like Jesus was walking. And he did. I don't know how many steps that he made, but he made a few, didn't he? But that did take faith, didn't it? He was at least willing to do what? To follow Jesus, to go to Jesus, wasn't it? That's more than the other. It's more than the others did, wasn't it? They didn't do anything. They just sat there. But here goes Peter, walking toward Jesus. But when he saw the boisterous wind, the, but when he saw the wind boisterous, and he was afraid and began to sink, he cried, saying, "Lord, save me!" Now. He realized he was doing something that really, humanly speaking, scientifically speaking, however you want to look at it, couldn't be done. But he was doing it for a while because why? His confidence wasn't in himself. His confidence was in Jesus. And he wasn't upset about the situation and the circumstances that was going on around him for a little while. But then, when he got out there on that sea, the wind, the waves, it overwhelmed him, didn't it? He took his eyes off Jesus, and he began to sink, didn't he? You see, the circumstances, the situation overcame his faith. Now listen, we can be critical of him, and we can look at it and say, well, this is why... It happened. He took his eyes off Jesus, and you know, and we'd be right, wouldn't we? We'd be right in saying that that if he kept his eyes on Jesus and hadn't let the circumstances, the situation overwhelm his faith, he could went rock, walk, walk right to him, couldn't he? Would have. But what happened though? What happened? He did take his eyes off the Lord. He did allow the situation, the circumstance, to overwhelm his faith, and he began to do what? Sink, didn't he? Sure did. But listen, you, I, I've, never, I've never tried to walk on water. You probably haven't either. But there have been situations in your life where you've allowed the circumstances to overwhelm your faith, haven't you? Sure you have. You've took your eyes off Jesus before, haven't you? You've let, you've let your focus become on the situation 
and you've lost faith in the fact that God, with God, all things are possible. And you too have been like Peter. You might not have been sinking in the water, but you were being grounded by the situation and the circumstances, being overwhelmed by what was going on. Why? Because you allowed your faith to be overcome by situations and by circumstances. I've been there. You've been there. We can relate to this, can't we? We can all relate to what Peter was going through at this particular time. He did what we've all done. Took our eyes off Christ. Lost focus on the fact that he is a God who is almighty and all powerful and can do all things. And we let those situations and circumstances overwhelm us. But he did know this though. When this did happen, and it does happen. It's happened to you. It's happened to me. What did he do? <clears throat> Lord, save me. That's what he said, wasn't it? Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when, he had, and when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased so he called upon the one who could say <clears throat> the only one who could help he called upon Jesus didn't he how many times how many times in your life has you had to call upon Jesus when you've let things overwhelm your faith when you've as I said you know been a victim uh, the circumstance. You've allowed yourself to be the victim of the circumstance of the situation. You've been overpowered by it, overwhelmed by it, overcome by it. But aren't you thankful? Aren't you glad that when those times occur, Jesus is right there. The Bible says he immediately, didn't it? He didn't want to say, well, I'm going to teach you a lesson. I'm going to let you sink for a little while and go down a couple of times and gurgle a few times and I'll finally save you and you'll know the next time I'm going to, he didn't do that did he the Bible says he immediately saved him, immediately came to his rescue you see God is there for us isn't he when our faith falters when our faith fails when we get in the same situation that Peter's in right here, aren't you glad that the Lord is there for us as well and you can call upon him and he will save you then now having said that about Peter we can look at him we can analyze it we can critique it and we can say well this is what happened to Peter this is why he sank this is this, this is that and we can say all that can't we but I want to talk about the 11 didn't get out of the boat <clears throat> There's 11 of them didn't get out of the boat, wasn't there? They stayed in the boat. Now he says to Peter, Oh, thou little fellow. <coughs> well, seems to me like the 11 that stayed in the boat didn't have any faith, did they? Hmm? They didn't get out of the boat, did they? They stayed right in there, didn't they? So see, I want to focus on them and talk about them. We can talk about Peter and we can critique Peter and we can talk about Peter should have done that, Peter should have done that. What about the 11? They get a free pass? No, I don't think they should. None of them got out of the boat, did they? No. You see, here's the thing about it. When you step out <laughs> for the Lord and you decide to follow Jesus, and that's what he, he was wanting to go to Jesus, wasn't it? You run the risk, my friend of your faith faltering. Do you not? Sure you do. But let me tell you something. Christ said if we had the faith the size of the grain of a mustard seed, I don't know how big a mustard seed is, I've been, I'm going on a very, very small seed. If you had that much faith, then you could say to a mountain, move, and you could move that mountain. Have you ever met anybody could do that? I have. 
No. So what does that say about our faith? If it was as big as the grain of a mustard seed, we could move a mountain. I've never made anybody move a mountain, so how, how big is my faith? See what I'm saying? I need to understand, I need to realize that. <coughs> as a human being, my faith does falter. Yours does. Everyone does sometimes. It doesn't take much sometimes to get it to falter either, does it? Because why? We're sinful human beings. That's who we are. That's who we are. And when you decide to do what Peter did, you run the risk of failing. You do. And having to ask for forgiveness. But I would rather do what Peter did and sink. Because I know if I did begin to sink, the Lord would save me. I'd rather do what he did and sink than to sit in the boat and do nothing. Wouldn't you? Which is what most people do. Nothing. They sit and they do nothing. They never step out for the Lord. They never run, want to run that risk, so to speak, of failing. And so they just sit and do nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Look. The Lord needs you to use this expression, get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. Follow Jesus. Trust Jesus. Yes, are you going to fail? Yes, you will. You're going to probably <laughs> fail more times than you are successful. I found that to be the case in life, if you do anything. You're going to fail more than you are be successful. Why is that? Because you're a human being. You're a human being. That's what you are. That's what you do. You fail. But aren't you glad we have someone who forgives us and who loves us in spite of the fact that we do fail? I'm thankful for that. Grateful for that. So yes, failure goes with it. Yes, you expose yourself to the world. You open yourself up for criticism, just like Peter did. How many sermons have been preached on how Peter's faith faltered and how that he did it? How many times has he been critiqued for what he'd done? I mean, he hasn't he? Many. Yes, that happens. It's going to happen. But like I said, I still rather be Peter. And more than 11 sitting in the boat. Doing nothing. Doing nothing. You've got to be willing to put yourself out there. You've got to be willing to run the risk of failure. You've got to be willing to step out for the Lord, my friend. And when you do, understand this. Realize this. With that comes failure. Because you're a human being. You're a human being, you're going to fail. God knows you're going to fail. You think God doesn't know that? He knows that. He realizes that. But you see, we're fortunate enough that God has chosen us. He didn't choose the angels. He chose us to do his bidding in this world, to do his work in this world. And to make him known to this lost and dying world. And when you do that, when you do that, you open yourself up for criticism. You open yourself up for failure. You run the risk of all that's part of it. And many people choose not to have to deal with that. They don't want to deal with that. And so they, like the 11, do what? They just sit in the boat. They just sit in the boat. They don't do anything. I'd rather do something and fail than sit in the boat. What good are you accomplishing by sitting in the boat doing nothing? The Lord needs us. He needs you to be like Peter. Oh, we look at Peter's life. He stuck his foot in his mouth many a time. Uh, said some things he shouldn't have said. 
made some brags and boasts that he couldn't fulfill, didn't he? He sure did. He stands out as an example of someone who failed many, many times. I guess the one that I remember most about him was the fact that when Jesus was instructing them and telling them, look, they're going to come to arrest me. Now, I'm not, you know, they're not going to anoint me the king. They're going to come to arrest me, and I'm going to go to Jerusalem, and I'm not going to establish a kingdom. They're going to put me on a cross and crucify me, but I will rise again. I will rise again. He said, when they do that, every single one of you are going to run off. Every one of you. Peter says, not me, Lord. Not me. I won't. I'm not going to run. <clears throat> Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, before the rooster crows in the morning, you'll deny even knowing who I am three times. Three times. And that's exactly what happened, wasn't it? Exactly what happened. So you see, he failed, didn't he? He failed. The others didn't say anything. After Christ's resurrection, they spent all night fishing, hadn't caught anything. Christ was standing on the seashore and said, Look, turn on the side of the boat. They didn't have so many fish, couldn't only pull them in. They recognized who it was. He's the Lord. Well, Peter couldn't wait. He just jumped in the water and swam to him. Excited to see Jesus. That's when he was commissioned by Jesus to feed his sheep. He was told that three times. Peter, this is what I want you to do. This is what I desire you to do. And he became the leader within the church, the early church, didn't he? Preached the sermon on the uh, preached the sermon at Pentecost, where all those thousands of people were saved. My point is this: <coughs> God's not going to discard you. He's not going to abandon you. He's not going to desert you when you fail. Now, man might. Man's good for that. But Jesus is not going to. He didn't Peter, did he? No. And he won't you either. Look, you need to understand something. God knows who you are. God knows that you're a sinner. God knows you're not perfect. God knows you're going to fail. But he chooses to love you anyway. He chooses to call you anyway. He chooses to send you out of this lost and dying world to witness to others. So, get out of the boat. Get on the water. I'm afraid I'm going to sink. Well, you will. You are. I don't want to fail. I don't want people to make fun of me. I, well, you, you're going to. People are. That's, what it, that's just the way it is. But just like Peter, when you start sinking, the Lord saved me. <coughs> and he did, didn't he? Be willing to follow the Lord. Be willing to put yourself out there. Be willing to step out there. That's where the blessings come from. There are no blessings sitting in the boat. The blessings come from putting yourself out there. Running that risk. Taking that chance, so to speak, for the Lord. So, you can either be like Peter, or you can be like the 11 that sit in the boat and didn't get out of the water. They, they didn't, you know, I can say they didn't, they didn't have to, they didn't have to cry for the Lord to save them, you know, they, you know, but they, Christ said, I come to despite have life and have it more abundantly. How in the world can you enjoy life 
sitting on the sideline all the time. How can you enjoy life like that? God wants you to live your life. And he wants you to live, his, to live your life for him. And with that comes risk and chances and failures. It's worth it. It's worth it, my friend. You've got to allow your little bit of faith to overcome your fear of failing. <coughs> Here's the thing about Peter. He wasn't afraid to fail. Most people are afraid to fail. Well, get over that because you're going to. You might, you know, matter of fact, you're failing if you don't do anything. You've already failed if you don't do anything. Get over the fear of failing. Get out of the boat. Just like Peter did. If you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The devil will plant all kinds of fears in your mind about, well, you shouldn't go up there. What will people think of you? You know, things like that. You don't want to be the one that people see. And then, you know, afraid, ashamed to stand up for the Lord out of fear of what people might think what people might say <coughs> don't you let the devil deceive you that way God loves you Jesus loves you the only way that you can go to heaven is through faith in Jesus Christ. The devil knows that. That's why he doesn't want you to come and humble yourself and ask Jesus Christ to save you. He knows that. Because he knows when you do that, my friend, you're going to heaven. You're receiving eternal life. And he's going to do anything that he can to keep you from doing that. He'll use anything that he can, anyone he can, to keep you from doing just that. Don't let him do it. Have the courage to come forward and say, no, I believe. I believe in the Lord. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't care what anybody else says. It doesn't matter to me. I believe in Jesus. I want him as my Lord and as my Savior. If you're here today and you don't know him, don't you let Satan deceive you. Don't you let Satan to have you sit back there and do nothing. Come forward and receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today. <coughs> as a Christian, get out of the boat. Take the chance. Are you going to fail? Yes, you are. But you've got a God that loves you and a God that forgives you. That will enable you and empower you to do what? Continue doing for him. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, thank you this morning for this message, God. Thank you for each one in attendance. I pray, God, you would apply it to our hearts and lives and help us to understand and realize, God, we need to get out of the boat. Get out of the boat, Lord. And don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to put ourselves out there, God, and become a part of what you're doing in this world today. And Father, this is one here that doesn't know Christ as Savior. I pray that they would... Not allow Satan to deceive them and to trick them into thinking, Lord, that it's fine just to sit there, just to sit in the boat. No, Lord, we're all in that same boat. We've all sinned and come short of your glory, God. If we don't get out of that boat and come to Jesus, we're all going to perish. Help them to realize that, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We stand out and we sing a song of invitation. Page 321. <laughs>
that is ready to meet the Lord. He is coming back. We talked about in our Sunday school class. We don't know when, but he is coming back. <coughs> Amen. Uh, next Sunday is Youth Sunday, so I challenge you youth to pray about this week, being able to come up here, not getting out of that boat, getting out of that pew, and come up here and tell this church something you have to be thankful for. You got a week, and I'm sure you there's a lot of things in your life you can be thankful for. But I'm going to challenge you to not just sit back there in the boat. Get out of the boat. Get up here. Take that chance. Take that risk. Yeah, you might get a little tongue-tied. You might get a little embarrassed, but be like Peter. Don't be like the other 11. Just sit there. Take that chance. So next week's you Sunday. I challenge you, kids. Use your ability. Use your talent to roar next week. <coughs> All right. Uh, Anything else before we dismiss? Anyone else have anyone else word anything before we dismiss? Remember, singing testimony service tonight. So be remembering that. Right, anything else? Anyone else? Yeah, again, I'd like to thank the Lord for all my blessings. Amen. Uh, Amen. I'm not worthy that He's blessed me, and I'm so blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Anyone else? I can't get out of the boat next week. I'm going to get out this morning. I was praying yesterday and I've been eating dust all week and God sent us a rain last night. And you talk about a blessing. Amen. When you see stuff drying up and withering up. And then God sends you an inch and a half rain. You ask him for a share and he sends you an inch and a half. <laughs> and you talk about a blessing. Now that's God's blessing. Amen. Amen. I just want to praise him for it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right, then Darius dismisses. Father, come to you again. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you understand? Thank you for letting us come back to your house and worship you. We thank you for this time we've heard today. We thank you for our Sunday school lesson that we heard. Lord, we thank you to continue to bless this church. Next promise we know, most of all, the souls will be saved. Lord, I pray for your Bible. Destiny will bring us back to the point of time. In your name I pray. Amen.